300 years after our great nation began, we gather together to honor the completion of Vault 76. It's nearly here, one of the most controversial and hyped up games to release this year. Fallout 76 is about to release. Here is 76 things you need to know about the game ahead of its launch. My name is Jay Place Games. Let's go. This video may or may not contain information that changes in the beta. I'm not liable for any incorrect info, therefore suck out with any details changed. There will be no refunds given. All info contained from media outlets, YouTube, game event coverage, and stress test leaks. Your statue rights are not affected. For more information, please see the description down below. So as we stand here today, we pray that the world will know peace. But if that is not our destiny, if war must come, we stand together knowing that here in Vault 76, our future begins. Fallout 76 is an always online persistent world. It never stops even when you log off. It is a multiplayer game and you can play it in groups of up to four players or solo. Fallout 76 is Fallout with friends. It's not a complete survival game, it's not a complete MMO. It's what happens if you added multiplayer to a Fallout game. Just with the added features of base building and survival aspects. The game is going to be available on the Xbox One, the PS4 and PC, but differently it won't be available on Steam at launch. You're going to have to download the PC version from Bethesda.net. And currently right now there are no plans to bring it to the Switch. The full game launches on November the 14th. If you pre-order the game you got access to the beta. The beta is available for Xbox owners on the 23rd of October and the 30th of October for PC and PS4. Bethesda have called it the Break It Early Test Application, but really it's just early access. That's because all your progress that you do in the beta carries over to the full game, so if you pre-order you get a head start on anyone else. As it's a multiplayer game, you are going to need to communicate with people. There is proximity, voice chat and there is an emote system. Currently there is no plans for in-game chat box. One of the biggest controversies about the game is the fact it's got PvP elements in it. You will be able to attack other players. Now, there are lots of anti-griefing measures in place and we're going to be going through them, but that's what you need to know very early on. The game does have some light PvP. So why Fallout 76? What exactly is the lore? Well, it's been mentioned in lots of other Fallout games, but Fallout 76 is the first vault to open up after the bombs have dropped. Reclamation Day is the day that the Vault Dwellers go forth and you're meant to reclaim America. Unlike other vaults in the Fallout series, the Vault 76 has not been messed with. You are just there to make sure that America is put back on track. The new Fallout world you're going to explore is set in West Virginia in the Appalachia mountain range. That's what the name of the map is actually called. There are six distinct regions, all with their own towns and points of interest for you to go and explore. The first region you emerge from the Vault 76 is the forest biome. You're going to be running around looking at all the beautiful hills and the lush vegetation and trees. Expect low radiation and low level enemies as you get used to the world of Appalachia. Ash Heap region is home to a massive mountain. It's got coal mines, it's got lots and lots of heavy industry. There is also another vault, Vault 63. Who knows how this factors into this game. Splitting Appalachia almost in two is the Savage Divide, a barren desert wasteland with a huge mountain range. You're going to be travelling through this to get from east to west. Southeast of the state is a cranberry bog, or in fact a collection of bogs, five of them. In this area expect to see much darker fauna and you may come across even some carnivorous plants. Far to the east you're going to come across the Maya, a huge massive range of swampland. Best bring your welly boots when exploring this region. And the last major region you may be exploring is the Toxic Valley. Now there's not much known about this area other than the name it may imply there's lots of dangers to do with the environment. Speaking of environment, did you know the game has real time weather, day and night cycles and seasons? You will be experiencing the full range of time going through the Appalachia map. As you play through you may count a weather effects like rain, snow and lots and lots of storms maybe even some toxic clouds. To help you navigate Appalachia, the Pip-Boy returns, but in full colour, you will now be able to see the map in a full range, rather than the green on black. Character customization returns, just like Fallout 4. However, one big difference is you can change your appearance anytime you want, just by going into the pause menu. 
This is because another huge change, Fallout 76 does have cosmetic items that you can buy using atoms. You earn atoms alongside your caps. You can earn atoms in game by completing challenges daily, weekly or over time. However, if you want to get past that, you can buy atoms with real world currency. These cosmetic items affect nothing to do with gameplay, they are strictly only there as cosmetics. All cosmetics that you buy can be put on over your armour, so no longer will you have to choose between wearing a beautiful dress or that lovely power armour. You can wear both. Each world or slash server that you run around on can hold up to 24 players, however that can increase. If you're worried about getting your friends joining you on a server that's already capped out, you will be able to invite them. Up to 32 players can actually exist on the server but the soft cap is 24. This gives you a little bit of wriggle room if you've got some friends who want to join and have not been able to get on because the server has been full. Coming across other players may be rare due to the size of the map, but it may be needed because there are no real NPCs in the game. Well, no human ones anyway. A big controversy is the fact that there are no other humans supposedly in the game. The only other humans you're going to come across are other players. There's going to be plenty of robots, plenty of super mutants, and you will be able to interact with some of these. But the majority of your missions are going to come from holodecks, notes, and robots littered around the Appalachia map. But don't worry, that doesn't mean there's not a main campaign. There is. The Overseer of Vault 76 left the vault early with a secret mission. You are there to find out exactly what's gone on and where the Overseer has gone. This is going to be the main campaign and the main nuts and bolts of Fallout 76 as you try and follow in the footsteps of the Overseer and find out exactly what's been happening. To help you achieve that is the returning special and perk system. With one huge difference, perks are now perk cards which you earn through playing the game. You stick points into your specials as you normally do, but be warned you won't be able to respec. It's your perk cards you're going to be able to chop and change to suit whatever playstyle you need. Special caps out of 50, but you're always going to be able to earn even more perk cards. You'll be able to swap these over with other players. And put enough points in charisma and you'll be able to share some of your perk bonuses with your team. Expect a full individual video going over exactly everything to do with the perk cards and the special system in the next few days. Also returning from Fallout 4 is the settlement building system. It's going to be a major component of Fallout 76. In fact, it's been relabeled as Camp. Camp is your portable building device which you can transport around. It allows you to build your base anywhere you want on the map. Well, nearly anywhere. There are a couple locations and particularly in some big major towns where you may not be able to build but the majority of the map is explorable and you will be able to place and set up home anywhere. Once you've built your base don't worry about people raiding it when you're offline. When you go offline your base disappears with you. In the event that a player decides your spot where you built is absolutely amazing and they build there too, when you return to the server you'll find your camp all packed up in a handy blueprint so you can go and build your base elsewhere. But remember, the map is absolutely huge, so the chances that another player building exactly in the same spot as you while you're gone is pretty small. When you are online, you have to be careful though, your base can be damaged by other players and creatures in the game. In fact, a big component of it is setting up defences to stop some of the mutants, monsters attacking your base. You're going to be doing this with a vast array of traps and building pieces to trap and make sure that players or creatures think twice about coming near you. If you are off exploring and your base does come under attack from another player, don't worry, the majority of your stuff is going to be safe. You've got a special stash box that no one will ever be able to take out of. It holds up to 400 items at the moment, although that may be subject to change, and it looks like it's going to always be safe. However, any storage boxes or any crafting benches that you have littered around your camp, they may actually be able to be raidable. So make sure if you're running around the map, you always keep an eye on your base as well. There are limits to how big you can build your base. It has a cost meter and you can also move your base anytime you want by blueprinting it up for a small fraction of caps. You'd also be able to fast travel to your base anytime you want also. There are currently five tiers of building pieces that you can build in Fallout 76, giving you lots of extra protection against other players or other enemies. There are hundreds of different ways you can customise and make your home a real pleasant, nice place to relax after you've been running around gaining radiation. You're also going to be coming back to your base regularly to repair your items. Item degradation is back in the game from Fallout 3. Weapons, armour, you're all going to have to repair it as you go along. And some of these items may only be repairable at workbenches. 
It looks like there's going to be lots of perk cards to help you achieve this quicker, easier and cheaper. So keep an eye on that gun or that favourite melee weapon of yours, you'll never know when it's about to break, so make sure you always got something as backup. Weapons and armor is going to be really important because that's what matters when you come into contact with other players. It's not necessarily your level, it's the level or the items that you're using. You're also going to have to think about your weight a little bit more. Encumbrance is in the game of course, but it now applies to all ammo. And while it's still a small amount, you really may have to think even more about how much you can carry and whether or not it's really worth getting that new typewriter. You will still be able to move when you're over encumbered, but you won't be able to sprint, nor will you be able to fast travel. So don't worry, you can still jump, hop, but not necessarily skip. But there definitely are some penalties. Your action points will actually drain when you're moving while over encumbered. There's a whole host of status effects that are returning from previous Fallout games and some new ones. The more interesting one is mutations. When you gain a mutation through being exposed to too much radiation, it has positive effects and negative effects. As the video clip shows, you may be able to jump a little bit higher and a little bit further as a kangaroo mutation, but you may drain your stamina a lot quicker. Mutations can have a chance of being cured while using Radaway, but if there's a mutation you really love or enjoy, there is a perk card that you can get which stops that from actually being taken away. Conditions make a return from Fallout 4, so you have to be careful if you get injured, as well as things like drunk, overdose, poison and radiated. You can need lots of chems to make sure you cure some of these. Survival is a key aspect of the game. Whether or not it wants to be called a survival game or not, you will need to eat and drink. If you don't have enough food and water, it starts to affect your action points as well as your health points. Making sure you've always got a full belly will give you good bonus buffs for a limited time as well as making sure you're getting plenty of sleep. And even doing something as relaxing as playing the tuba would also give you a nice positive buff. Fallout 76 is the first time that survival game has actually been the base game rather than an option or additional game mode. So you're also going to have to deal with diseases such as blight, dysentery, rad and worms. So again, keeping on top of all these conditions and afflictions is really important if you want to maintain your body, your spirit and your mind. Also returning is the VAT system with one crucial difference. There is no slowdown of time. Obviously because it's an ongoing server, you can't slow down a server for everyone else. So it's simply now helpful in making sure you're targeting the right body part. That is when you upgrade it. Initially the VAT system has not been the best in beta testing. But if you do decide to put some points into the special and equip some perk cards to help it out, maybe it improves drastically. And you're going to need all the help you can get with the vast array of creatures and enemies that are in Fallout 76. Many returning from previous games as well as brand new ones. Also mini bosses like the Mothman and the Scorched Beasts. In fact it looks like the Scorched Beast really will be the Umro Numro boss type you're going to be fighting on the map periodically. There's a whole host of creatures only doing a detailed breakdown of every creature that's in Fallout 76 once it launches. Just know that some of these creatures may only appear as special event time bosses. Events are a big component of Fallout 76, you're going to be completing lots of these. Whether or not it's a challenge that you find in a town or a holodeck, which involves simply escorting a robot to a location, or more the advanced events like taking down a boss. The majority of these events are going to be PvE, however there is a selection of PvP events that can take place if you choose to take part. You'll be able to fast travel to any of these events even if you've not discovered that part of the map before. The majority of these events are going to be completely random taking place all over the map so you have a choice sometimes of taking part in one, two or if you're really quick maybe even three or four. They all vary in length and difficulty, some of them will really require a full squad or definitely trying to get in on the last moment. Occasionally you'll also come across airdrop events or you may have to instigate it yourself by finding a holodeck and taking it to a government relay tower. Once called in, it should hopefully drop you some decent high level loot, but again be warned, other players may be able to see it and nick it from you in an instance. As mentioned, PvP could be a core component of the game if you choose it to be, but there are lots of limitations and rules in place to stop griefing. PvP is more like dueling, you'll initiate the challenge, you'll take aim at the player and fire, and if that player responds, you then have a duel to the death. The winner will receive some caps and whatever junk the other player had, but not your armour or your weapons. In fact, whenever you die, the only thing you're going to lose is a small amount of caps and your junk. All other items will stay with you no matter what. 
If you don't want a fight and you don't want to risk it, if the player keeps harassing you and somehow manages to kill you even though he's doing a very small amount of damage, I say small because unless you respond to that attacker, they will only be able to do a tiny percentage of damage to you compared to if you respond. If the player does manage to kill you, he's going to be labelled wanted or murderer and his location will be up on the map for everyone to see. He'll have a bounty placed on his head and anyone that kills him will then receive caps. Unless you respond to someone attacking you, that attacker will gain nothing from killing you. He won't get any caps or any junk. This is how Bethesda are responding to griefing. Any bounty placed on a player, the caps will actually come out of the player's own pocket when he is killed. If he runs out of caps, he'll get a debtor's buff where he will actually have a debuff for a time, giving him minus caps until he pays it off. But it's not just caps that it affects, you'll also be doing less damage against other players and creatures in the game until you pay that debt off. So think on all them players that thought they might jump on from Rust and have a good old time, it really might not be worth it being a griefer. If you do want to take part in Bloodthirsty War, there are some crucial things you need to know. If you're killed in a PvP battle, you can respawn very close by to hopefully seek revenge, or you can respawn on your team if you're in a part of a group. If you really don't want to get involved in any more PvP, you can spawn anywhere across the map as long as you've discovered it or back at your camp. Of course, before you do any of that, you need to get to level 5. That's when you can actually initiate PvP. Before then, you won't be able to do any PvP on any other players, and other players won't be able to spawn camp you at the very beginning of the game. If you really don't want to engage in any activities against other players, there is a way around it. You can turn on a special pacifist mode, which means you'll never actually do damage with any of your weapons. You can also shoot members of your own team, and you can get the bounty if there's one placed on them. But being friendly pays off. Fallout 76 is meant to be played in a squad-based game mode. Up to four can be in a squad at any one time, and you share all XP gained while doing missions. If you're downed, any player from your squad, or in fact any player nearby, can actually come and help revive you. But don't think death is going to be a cheaty way to get rid of any buffs or any negative effects. You will keep some of them negative effects when you respawn. The only way to get rid of them is by applying the usual chems or finding bonuses. To help with that, you can trade with other players. Simply go up to someone, offer something from your infantry, and then if they accept, you may even have a chance to go through theirs. Once you're both happy, you both agree and you trade. A big part of teaming up and maybe taking part in some PvP events is the workshops. Workshops are special zones on the map that you will fight for control of. You can claim these workshops and they'll give you bonuses and more resources. Once claimed, you're going to have to fight off maybe some waves of natural enemies that will suddenly appear. And if another rival gang or player wants to take control of that workshop, they can actually claim it for themselves, which will start the PvP battle. You can place any camp blueprint you've got around your workshop area, so in a way you can protect it from other players while you're gathering resources. Once you leave the server, your camp protection will leave also, so it means that the workshop may be open for any other players to come along and claim. Another big reason to group up and do things as part of a squad is the nuclear codes you're going to need to set off nuclear missiles. Nukes are the end game status, it's what you're going to be achieving and striving towards by completing the main missions. Once you unlock nuclear missiles you'll then have to go around finding the codes to actually launch them. These codes will be on enemies or you may even find them scattered around the world, but you're going to need a complete set before you can even unlock the bunkers needed to fire the missiles. When you fire your nuclear missile, it will change the landscape for wherever it lands. This area will become rich in resources and special items that you can only get when it's been irradiated like this. You may also trigger special creatures and enemies to go and fight and more events. Areas detonated with nuclear missiles will return to normal after a while and you can pinpoint places on the map exactly where you want to fire them. However, you can't target players specifically. If a player decides to move out of location and you fired your nuke, the nuke will just go to that location. There's going to be four nuclear missile sites that you can access to fire these missiles. And obviously once exploring these zones you're going to need to make sure you've got the correct armour or hazmat suits. You're given a 3 minute warning if a nuclear missile is incoming in. You can escape the nuclear impact during this time, if you don't however your base may take some damage and you may have to repair it at a cost of caps. And of course if you're not wearing the right type of armour or protection you may actually die yourself. 
So that's the bulk of what you'll be aiming for, trying to get hold of these nuclear missiles and setting them off so you can get high level gear and loot. But what about the future of Fallout 76? The game is an online service game, it's going to receive content periodically after launch, with Bethesda stating that they plan to support it for many years to come. Part of this will be private servers or a way to host your own rentable server. Scheduled for some time in 2019 but not at launch. But once implemented you will also be able to add mods to your private servers. A game not expected until November 2019, this is going to take some considerable time but it may spice up something if you're owning or renting your own world. There is going to be free DLC, this is going to be supplemented by the fact that the Atom Store exists, so all that cosmetic cash money is going towards free DLC for the future. Bethesda have stated that there is no crossplay going to be enabled for launch as it's only just been announced between Sony, Xbox and of course other systems, but it may be something they look at in the future. Undoubtedly Fallout 76 is going to be a unique and different take on the Fallout genre. Since it was revealed, Fallout 76 has garnered a lot of attention and some of it quite negative from long time Fallout fans, as well as new fans that maybe wanted more from the game in terms of PvP. This game is Fallout with multiplayer, it's not meant to be the new Rust, it's not meant to be a Destiny, it's not even meant to be a Borderlands, it's meant to be something that you kick back, chill, run around an opulent world filled with creatures, filled with lots of loot that you and your friends can strive towards and work towards. It's got some of the best features from previous survival games that you'd come to expect like base building and the survival aspects, but it's not going too heavy on them. It's not an MMO, the servers are way too small in terms of how many players are on them, it's definitely feeling more and more like a Fallout experience but just with friends. It's still got buckets of stories and buckets of missions if you go out there and find it through the holodecks and there are some rumours that there may possibly be some mission giver NPCs in the future. I've come to terms with what Fallout 76 now presents itself so close to launch and I'm ready and hyped to go and explore the wastelands and give you guys all the information and guides you need. I'm going to be hitting this game hard with tutorials and info so make sure you're subscribed, make sure you've got notifications turned on and please like this video, it really helps me out. If you've enjoyed this let me know in the comment section down below. I am Jay Plays Games. this has been Fallout 76 Facts, I'll see you rat bags later.